Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. This is going to be a really quick video about Juneteenth, which is this Sunday, and it also happens to be the same day as Father's Day, um, which I will be doing some special Father's Day posts on Instagram today. So if you follow me on Instagram, be sure to check those out. Um, I do Family Friday posts every Friday, so this Friday I'm going to be doing Father's Day edition. So, um, But yeah, Juneteenth is a holiday, which a lot of people don't know that this is actually a holiday, like a national holiday. Um, generally, it's not celebrated like federally, like how Memorial Day or Columbus Day, but it is actually a national holiday. It's just not recognized federally. It's generally recognized on a state level, so every state kind of does what they want with this holiday. However, Juneteenth, which is June 19th, which will be this Sunday, Juneteenth is a celebration. It's pretty much the real Independence Day for African Americans, for black people in this country, for black Americans, not July 4th, because similar to what I talked about in my Roots review, when we gained our independence, from Britain, from the British, at the end of the Revolutionary War, black Americans were still enslaved. Um, black people were still enslaved in this country. We did not gain any type of freedom. So Independence Day really is not our holiday. It, it really, you know, doesn't mean much to us um, because we were still enslaved. June 19th was actually the day that the very last of the slaves were freed in Texas. So I'm going to read you guys a little bit of background on it because you might say like, oh, June 19th, like that's not the day that the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. And no, it was not. So during, this is via Wikipedia, during the American Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on September 22, 1862, with an effective date of January 1, 1863. It declared all slaves to be freed in the Confederate States of America in rebellion, and it also announced that the Union would start recruiting former slaves and free blacks to serve in the military, and recruitment began in the spring of 1863. Now, Similar to what I talked about in my roots video, there's this idea that black people didn't fight for ourselves, that white people fought for us, that white people freed us, but we did have a sense of agency. We did fight for ourselves. We were actively recruited by the Union Army, and technically, we were freed after September 22nd. Well, I'm not going to say that. It was backdated to January 1st, 1863, which meant it didn't really take effect. Like, he kind of gave slaveholders time to, like, get their affairs in order and shit. So we'll say as of January 1st, 1863, black Americans were supposed to be free in this country. Now, do you think that the people in the Confederacy listened to that? No, they didn't. Just like how during the Revolutionary War, I'm using a, another Roots example here, just like how in the Revolutionary War, when they didn't take into account that Kunta Kinte had the, the liberated shirt on, you know, oh, well, you got that from the British and we don't give a fuck what they say. You know, the Confederacy had... They seceded from the Union, so they considered themselves to be their own country. You know, President Lincoln wasn't their president. They didn't give a fuck what he had to say. So many Confederate states did not free their slaves, one of which was Texas. Now, as the war raged on and, and they were losing, more and more slaves either escaped or were freed as the, the southern states fell. But the very last state to free their slaves was Texas. So I'm going to read you guys a little bit more. More isolated geographically, Texas was not a battleground, and thus its slaves were not affected by the Emancipation Proclamation unless they escaped. Yet again, slaves were also not allowed to read, so obviously they couldn't read the Emancipation Proclamation for themselves. Someone had to go and tell them, which is another way, again, that not allowing your slaves to read was just another step in keeping us disenfranchised and keeping us ignorant and keeping us you know, so that we don't know what's going on with the world in the world around us. Everything has to come through Master. And Master can say whatever he wants. Master can tell you that you're about to fall off the edge of the world tomorrow and you don't have any way of verifying it because you can't read. So, um, more isolated geographically, Texas was not a battleground, and thus its slaves were not affected by the Emancipation Proclamation unless they escaped. Planters and other slaveholders had migrated into Texas from eastern states, and many brought their slaves with them, increasing by the thousands the number of slaves in the state at the end of the Civil War. 
Although most slaves lived in rural, rural excuse me, areas, more than 1,000 resided in both Galveston and Houston by 1860, with several hundred in other large towns. By 1865, there were an estimated 250,000 slaves in Texas. As news of end of the war moved slowly, it did not reach Texas until May 1865, and the Army of the Trans-Mississippi did not surrender until June 2nd. On June 18th, 1865, Union General Gordon Granger arrived at Galveston Island with 2,000 federal troops to occupy Texas on behalf of the federal government. On June 19th, Juneteenth, Granger read aloud the contents of General Order Number 3 announcing the total emancipation of slaves. So it took almost three years after the Emancipation Proclamation was, you know, issued for the last of the slaves in Texas to be freed. And that was on June 19th, 1865. So many people, and I'm one of those people I agree, feel like June 19th is again, is our Independence Day. That's our day of, of emancipation. That's our day of liberation. That was the day that the last black American slaves in this country were freed and that it's really a day that we should learn more about in school and that should really be celebrated you know on the same level as a columbus day why the fuck do we celebrate columbus day you know a memorial day a veterans day an independence day july 4th the day that you know america received its its emancipation from britain but that did nothing for black americans a lot of the times in the way that we're taught history and, and in the way that we're exposed to media and the way that our, our society runs. You know, there's this idea that, again, that race doesn't exist. You know, for a long time, people people are taught as they're growing up, like, race doesn't exist and we're all the same and this and that. And it's like, but race does exist. And race impacts the way that, you know, certain historical events affect us, you know? You can say like, oh, July 4th is an American holiday and everyone needs to celebrate July 4th as the day that, you know, we, we gained our freedom from, from Britain. And it's like, okay, but black people were not freed. So that holiday did not affect, does not affect us in the same way. It didn't affect us back then as they showed in Roots when they, when they gained their freedom, when white people gained their freedom. And it doesn't affect us in the same way now when white women gain the right to vote. Black women didn't have the right to vote. Native women didn't have the right to vote. And yet every year on this certain day, we're supposed to celebrate women gaining the right to vote, which all these things do is further this idea that whiteness is the norm, that it's the standard, that it's the template, that, you know, these things that are great for white people and that happened to white people were great for all of us and happened to all of us and that we all have to celebrate it and that there's no nuances or differences when there are, and race is a huge part of what impacts our experiences in this country. And I wish we talked about that more, you know, in school and in different environments, but that would actually force people and force our country to relegate, you know, this legacy of racism and classism and sexism and all that stuff. So anyways, June 19th was the day that the last black American slaves were freed in Texas. It is this Sunday, that is also Father's Day. I will include links in the description box, but uh, if you do live in the United States, because I know I have lots of people watching that don't live in the U.S., so hi to you guys too, but if you do live in the United States, um, there's probably a Juneteenth celebration going on in your town or in your city, um, so mostly if you just like type it into Google, like Juneteenth, um, lists, various lists of different types of celebrations pop up, um, so I definitely encourage you to go celebrate Juneteenth, to celebrate the, the actual emancipation of the slaves and our actual Independence Day and, and you know, celebrate and be around people you love and be around black people and share the love and bask in black excellence and have a good time. Um, so I'm going to read the, the general order number three before I go. The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves, and the connection heretofore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired labor. Former slaves in Galveston rejoiced in the streets after the announcement, although in the years afterward, many struggled to work 
through the changes against resistance of whites. But the following year, Friedman organized the first of what became annual celebrations of Juneteenth in Texas. Juneteenth, the Sunday, June 19th, celebrate it. Uh, have a great weekend. See you guys next time. Peace.